Hi, and welcome back to another episode on how to hack. So today we'll be discussing about how you can hack into databases like Microsoft SQL, MySQL, all the newer top databases like MongoDB and so on. So what we recognize is that every time there is a web application server, whether you're surfing from the internet, from websites, or you're accessing through a mobile application, there is always a web application server and there is a database at the back end. And what happened is that in a database server, it's very, very useful, especially for developers to actually house the information correctly, structurally in a way where you can query for data very quickly and be able to retrieve information very fast and do your analytics on it. And what happened is that because there are very structured worry or structured queries for you accessing to those type of databases, it makes it that much easier for the hackers to go after. And a lot of these data sources, they have a lot of different kind of very sensitive data, like personally identifiable information. That means your usernames, your passwords, your date of birth, your addresses, and also sensitive data like financial information. So with all this in mind, the hackers will always go after the databases first before anything else, because it knows that this is the place where you can get a lot of very juicy information. So without further ado, let us get started on today's tutorial. So over here, I've got Lix running, and we can go ahead and open up Terminal. And once we have Terminal, we can actually enter ifconfig so that we know the attacker machine's IP address. And once you have the IP address of 182.168.1.23, so this is the Call Linux IP address. And of course, moving forward, the first thing we'll use is nmap. So this is a very handy network mapping tool. And of course, we already have the target IP address of 182.168.1.15. And using MMAP, it will scan the server directly, whether it is over the internet or on your own lab environment. So here we have two different kind of database services within the web server or within the server. So we got MySQL and PostgreSQL. So we'll be demonstrating a lot of different kind of attacks against PostgreSQL databases. So we can go ahead and enter MSF console, and this will start up the Metasploit framework. And within Metasploit framework, there's a lot of key capabilities for us to enumerate PostgreSQL, SQL, find passwords, find usernames, run commands within it. So a lot of key capabilities for us to look into. So the first thing you can do is enter search. And when you enter search, you can actually enter PostgreSQL. And once you do that, it will actually highlight all the modules across the entire the entire Metasploit framework to tell you which are the modules that you can use. So of course over here we have the Postgres Postgres, we got JTR, DB name, hash dumping, login, schema dump, Postgres version and so on. So a lot of key capabilities for us to use directly against the Postgres SQL database. So the first thing we can do is we can actually try to find out potentially login information like usernames and passwords. So we can actually go ahead and enter use followed by the use of auxiliary scanner postgres postgres underscore login so once you do that you can enter show options so this will show you some of the key options that you will get to be able to use these specific targets so we can set number one on the setting of blank passwords so we will set blank underscore passwords as true and once we have set forward we also want to look at a specific username to authenticate at as well as the username as the password for all users and so on. So here we see that we have two files. So one, we got the Metasploit framework word list. So this is Postgres default user pass. So what we can do is we can have a new window. And of course, we can actually do a cat. And when we enter cat, we can paste the file directory. And we do that and we can see we got Postgres, Postgres, we got Postgres password, Postgres admin, and so on. And of course, the second list that we have here is the Postgres default user. So likewise, we can enter cat followed by pasting the directory of the file that we want to look into. So here we got Postgres, Scott, and admin. So we got some of this key information. So we also have to set the R host as 192.168.1.15. So remember earlier, this is the IP address of the target machine, and we are going to set it inside the module. And of course, once we have all the settings, we also can check on the R pod. So we remember the R pod, which is the target pod number as 5432. So if you screw up a little and you look back into the scan result from Nmap, so we got 5532 on TCP, Transmission Control Protocol on Postgres SQL. So this is the correct IP or this is the correct port number that we have to work on. So once we have all this information set forward, we can go ahead and enter exploit. 
And once we go into exploit, we can see we got a lot of failed logins with the invalid username and password until on this segment. In this segment, we see that we got postgres and postgres at template. So we have the user login name as well as password. So this is a successful attack. And what we will do is we can open up your favorite text editor. We can paste it over there and we can actually have the username and password directly. So moving forward, we can enter search postgres and when we do search postgres, we can use other function. So the first function perhaps we want to look at is to understand what kind of postgres version is it using on so that we can look back into the CVE common vulnerability exposure exploit database list. Number one is to actually help us look out for potential exploit that can give us full system access into the target machine. So of course, there's a lot of other usage in terms of knowing the version so that we can also know exactly what kind of commands we can put forward in Postgres. So over here, we have use auxiliary scanner, Postgres, Postgres underscore version, and we can enter show options. So again, we have database, which is template one that is correct. We have the password and we need to set the L host as our host as 182.168.1.15. And we got a username Postgres too, so everything is correct. And once everything is correct, you can go ahead and enter exploit. And once we hit exploit, we can see that we're running on Postgres 8.3.1 on the i486 PC. So again, all this information is being flagged out automatically for you. And of course, moving forward, we can use another module within Postgres, all the modules that we can see over here. And we want to look at in terms of the hash dump. So we're going to copy this. So this will tell us the hash value or the password that we can look into. So we can actually enter use and then we can paste the auxiliary module here. So auxiliary scanner Postgres Postgres hash dump. Once you use that again, enter show options. And once you look at show options, we got the database. So we got to change the database. We got to set the database as template one. So once you've set the database, check on the password is correct. Check on the R host. So we got to set the R host as 182.168.1.15. And again, the R port is correct and the username is correct. So once you're done on that, you can go ahead and enter exploit. So here we can see we got the MD5 hash value and we can copy this information. And what we can do is we can actually go ahead and launch your favorite web browser and we can go to your favorite search engine and we can actually enter rainbow table. So we can actually do a lookup on the rainbow table. And over here we can look up for searching on the reverse or search on the reverse rainbow table. So on the rainbow table, you can go into a site like crackstation.net. And once you're here, we can actually paste the hash value. So I'm going to remove the MD5 value. And once you have that, click I am not a robot and enter crack hashes. So what happened on the back end is that they have a list of all these commonly used names, commonly used words, and they converted it to MD5 and then do a reverse lookup. So here we can see the result as Postgres, Postgres. So this is the hash value that we have actually extracted from the database. So moving forward, we can actually also run commands on or queries on the Postgres SQL. So when we enter search Postgres and we can actually look at over here. So we have a ability to run some queries into Postgres database and this allows us to do a lot more things and capabilities. So over here we have a number of modules and the number one modules that we will use is actually over here. So we got auxiliary and we got admin Postgres slash Postgres underscore SQL. So we can go ahead and enter use and we can paste the auxiliary module again and hit enter on that enter show options. So the first thing you can look at is it will use the SQL of select version. So again, this also tell us the version number of the database. So we can set the R host as 192.168.1.15. And of course, checking here, we got the correct username, we got the correct password, we got the correct database, and you can go ahead and enter exploit. So once you hit exploit, we can actually see that we got the same result coming in, the same result that we got earlier using the different module. So what we will do is we can actually open and look at some interesting queries that we can use. So we can actually paste this. So here we got set select SQL select from PG catalog dot PG underscore tables. So what we can do is we can actually update the SQL. So what we can do is we can set SQL and we can paste the command over here and we can hit enter on that. 
So this would actually help us look out for information. And once we have that, we can go ahead and enter exploit. And this will run the command or the query into the system. So what we can do is we can set it correctly. So let's look into the set SQL. And we have the select SQL select star from PG catalog dot PG tables. And once you have that, go ahead and enter exploit. And it says again invalid SQL. So let's go ahead and just use the select star from and go ahead and enter exploit. So once you have that, we can actually see we got all the table name, we got the table owner, we got a table space, has indexes and so on. And then from here on, we can query deeper into the database tables as well as row and columns, trying to look up for sensitive data and information. So there you're seeing it, how quickly we could actually access into the database by using Metasploit framework and using MMAP to scan the server looking out for potential databases opening and then using Metasploit to do your enumeration, to do the dumping of information on the different types of databases. So a lot of automation in place to help us gather those critical data. Because ultimately, when you think about all the hacking incidents that have occurred, what happened is that they're always going after the crown jewels first. And the crown jewels are usually hidden within the databases. And this is the place where the hackers go after first. So I hope you've learned something valuable in today's tutorial. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. And I will try my best to answer any of those questions. And remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.